Welcome to my YouTube channel. The Daily Post brings another new informative video, about billet formation by Electric Arc Furnace EAF. It is a quality video to get learn about Electric Arc Furnace EAF. If you are watching first time, please must visit my previous video about induction furnace. Please share and subscribe to get new videos. I suggest you to watch all previous videos. Keep watching the Daily Post. Choose the best way to learn. Let's have a look at the highlights of this content. In this video we will discuss about follow. How to prepare the scrap. Working of EAF. How to charge the EAF. Working of CCM. Water treatment plant. Air separation plant ASP. Production journey starts from scrap storage area, the scrap is checked by a detecting device of powerful radiation, before entering the scrap yard. Then scrap is sorted to many categories, and that's according to its density and chemicals contents. For steel production, the scrap coming from various industries, and imported scrap are utilized. Apart from this scrap available from locally, and imported scraps quality are identified, mixing together to obtain quality steel required for steel production. The main raw material in billet manufacturing process, is mild steel scrap which is procured from local and international markets. The scrap is mixed in predetermined proportions in the scrap yard, and fed to the furnaces in charging buckets, and melted by electric arc using graphite electrodes. The first step in the production of any heat, is to select the grade of steel to be made. Usually a schedule is developed prior to each production shift. Thus the melter will know in advance, the schedule for his shift. The scrap yard operator will prepare buckets of scrap, according to the needs of the melter. Preparation of the charge bucket is an important operation, not only to ensure proper melt-in chemistry but also to ensure good melting conditions. The electric arc furnace EAF has evolved into a highly efficient melting apparatus, and modern designs are focused on maximizing the melting capacity of the EAF melting is accomplished by supplying energy to the furnace interior. This energy can be electrical or chemical. Electrical energy is supplied via the graphite electrodes, and is usually the largest contributor in melting operations. Initially, an intermediate voltage tap is selected until the electrodes bore into the scrap. Usually, light scrap is placed on top of the charge to accelerate bore-in. Approximately 15% of the scrap is melted during the initial bore-in period. Dislanging operations, are carried out to remove impurities from the furnace. During melting and refining operations, some of the undesirable materials, within the bath are oxidized and enter the slag phase. It is advantageous to remove as much phosphorus, into the slag as early in the heat as possible, while the bath temperature is still low. The furnace is tilted backwards, and slag is poured out of the furnace, through the slag door. Removal of the slag eliminates the possibility of phosphorus reversion. During slag foaming operations, carbon may be injected into the slag, where it will reduce FAO to metallic iron, and in the process produce carbon monoxide which helps foam the slag. If the high phosphorus slag has not been removed prior to this operation, phosphorus reversion will occur. During slag foaming, slag may overflow the sill level in the EF and flow out of the slag door.
Once the desired steel composition and temperature are achieved in the furnace, the tap hole is opened, the furnace is tilted, and the steel pours into a ladle for transfer to the next batch operation, usually a ladle furnace or ladle station. During the tapping process, bulk alloy additions are made based on the bath analysis, and the desired steel grade. An increasingly competitive environment is putting pressure on global steel companies, to search for better ways to gain a commercial advantage in the market. They are looking for quality control solutions that allow them to produce a quality product in a manner, that maximizes mill yield, and minimizes scrap while meeting chemical specification. To produce high quality iron and steel, producers must utilize sample preparation, and analysis methods that are accurate, tailored to the individual sample types and deliver fast turnaround times. Continuous Casting Machine CCM, this is a process of making the ladle refined steel into billets. Throughout the continuous casting, the steel that has so far remained liquid is solidified into a shape. The semi-finished billet is utilized to produce a wide range of products after various processes. Solidification and Continuous Casting CC, technology is initiated in a water-cooled open-ended copper mold. The dimension of mold tube can vary, depending on the desirable casting size. The hot metal is transferred to a tundish from the ladle. The tundish allows a reservoir of metal to feed the casting machine, while ladles are switched thus smoothing out flow, and regulating metal feed to the molds. The solidification process in the mold is completed in secondary cooling zones, using a combination of water spray into a spray chamber, exits the base of the mold into a spray chamber. The steel shell which forms in the mold, contains a core of liquid steel which gradually solidifies, as the strand moves through the caster guided by a large number of roll pairs. The strand is cut into predetermined lengths, by traveling handheld oxyacetylene torches, or by mechanical shears. Billets made in the continuous casting process are fed into the mill through an automatic transfer system. Finally billets are piled in a horizontal vertical continuous order, and is marked by numbers commonly known as heat numbers, or lot numbers to keep track of production. The air pollution is one of the most impacting, and visible emission from the workshops of steel production. Fume treatment plant FDP is able to capture and treat the primary fumes from the furnace roof and the secondary fumes from the canopy hood on the building roof over the furnace shell, as well as the ladle furnace fumes and those from the material handling systems. WTP Water Treatment Plant Nowadays the water treatment plants are integral part of the steel and metal plants, they are able to treat and to recycle almost the 90% of the inflow waters or to discharge them in compliance with the environmental regulations. Air Separation Plant ASP It provides important feedstocks to several major manufacturing industries. For example, argon is used in welding, oxygen is used in steel production, and nitrogen is used as an inert gas in food and metals processing. 
A large number of industrial gases such as oxygen, nitrogen and argon are used in the smelting process of iron and steel enterprises. Thanks for watching this video. Hope, now you have clear concept of EAF, and about steel production process. If you like this video, please subscribe, and give your feedback in comment box. I will be surprised if you tell me from where you are watching this video in comment box. Keep watching the daily post. Choose the best way to learn.